I'm Daniel and welcome to the Immuno Project. We here at the Immuno Project are continuing in our series of videos with respect to uh, education, information, inspiration, guidance, advice. And I want to tell a story about an unusual circumcision, the events around a certain circumcision. And um, it was uh, Harav Arya Levine. He was accustomed to go to uh, synagogue on uh, Friday evening, Arab Shabbos. He'd get there early so that he could recite uh, Song of Songs. Song of Songs in a relaxed atmosphere and with abundant gladness, with great joy. One day he sat next to his Rebbe, Harav Chaim Berlin, who was the Rav of Jerusalem, the Rav of Yerushalayim. Together they recited Shira Shirim, the Song of Songs. They came very early to the verse, Behold, you are beautiful, my beloved. Behold, you are beautiful. Your eyes are doves. It's the first chapter, the 15th verse of the Song of Songs. This is a verse that extols the uh, uh, Jewish people for their deeds and resolve, liking its, uh, and liken its leadership, the eyes of the nation, to doves. The thing about doves is that they never fly further than eyesight of the nest. They will go as far as they can as long as they see the nest. They won't go further than that. They get to this passage, and then Chaim Berlin tears up. He, st he starts crying. And uh, Ravaria Levin says, Levin says, why are you crying? These are verses of praise to the Jewish people, their faithfulness. It's not a reason to cry. Rav Chaim Berlin explained his display of emotion with the following stories. Uh, Rav Chaim said he was once uh, a Rav in Moscow, in the former Soviet Union. When he was uh, a Rav, a very distinguished, very wealthy gentleman, once came uh, and asked to speak in private to Rav Berlin. He related that his wife gave birth to a boy and that he wanted to arrange for a, a bris, a circumcision. Um, and could Rav Berlin um, do him the honor of being the moil, the ritual circumcisers? But it had to be done in, in, in secret. It was not uncommon for people to ask uh, Rav Berlin to be a uh, moil, but this whole secrecy was, um, he wasn't expecting that. The man explained that his business was in the wholesale um, vending of crucifixes. He sold crosses. That's, that was his business. And it would not serve his business well to acknowledge publicly that he was Jewish. A public celebration was just was out of the question. Rav Chaim says, I agreed to perform the bris in secrecy. The man's servants were given the day off, and the father and I attended to the ceremonies, and afterwards, I asked the father to notify me on the third day as to the child's welfare. On the third day, the man attends to Rav Chaim Berlin's uh, office, tells him that, good news, everything's fine, the baby's great, and wonderful. And the man gives me, this is Rav Chaim Berlin talking, he gives me an envelope with which to pay for me, for my services as a moil. And he says, I refuse to accept that. I said, I don't, I don't accept money for this command, for this good deed. The man misunderstood and thought that, uh, that I was holding out for more money. I wasn't. I said, no, believe me, it's, I'm not trying to bargain for more money. I, I literally don't accept money for, for mitzvahs, for this, for this mitzvah. It's, I, I just don't. So the uh, father was a little surprised, but he was uh, about to leave. And I asked him this, Rav Chaim Berlin says, I asked him this. When I visited your home, I didn't notice even the slightest, the smallest testament 
that this was a Jewish home. There was no artifacts, no menorahs, no mezuzahs on the door, nothing. You gone to great lengths to hide your Jewishness. Why would you risk everything for, for the circumcision of your son? Why chance, exposure, after so many years of careful hiding of your faith? The man responded. He says, that I bet I know that I have distanced my faith, myself from the faith of my ancestors. I know, I don't know if I will ever come back to my roots. And I know one thing for sure, my child is not going to, know anything about his Jewish heritage that he goes at least I was raised by Jews he's not going to be raised in that environment he will have nothing of the sort one day though maybe in the future when he grows up and he meets other Jews who may inspire him to do tshuva to return to his faith I don't want to be a stumbling block to preclude his return. He was born a Jew, and the bris marks him as a Jew, and he will go through his life like this. If at one point he wishes to deserve, uh, uh, to return to the tshuva, I won't stand in the way by not giving him a bris. I cannot deprive my son of that legacy. And Rav Chaim Berlin turns, tears in his eyes, turns to uh, Rav Ari 11. And he says, now you know why I cry when I recite these verses. As the dove remains faithful to the dovecote, to the, to the nest, never flying further than the eyes can still see the nest. So too, our people retain that inner commitment <clears throat> to the Creator, regardless of how far they have strayed. Um, I'm going to be doing more videos along these lines. Please come back. Please watch. Please learn. And until next time, on behalf of the Amona Project, I'm Daniel, and thank you too much.